Nice to see you all back to political theory classes. As promised, in the first series, I'll be talking about different themes in Marxist political theory. I wish to make the lectures as easy as possible for you all to learn the basics. My knowledge of Marxism comes not only by reading the scholarly works, but also from learning, learning from the activists who practice Marxism in their day-to-day -day lives. So from them, I understand the need for making complicated things simple. And I will be making care efforts in that direction. Still, if there is any difficulty in understanding care my lecture, you can ask questions and I will try to clarify them in my subsequent lectures. As I told you, today I will be speaking on Marxist conception of history. Materialist conception of history or what Marxists call as historical materialism is the result of application of the principles of dialectical materialism to the understanding of laws governing the human society. Unlike Hegel, the idealist philosopher who looked at history as manifestation or embodiment of a dialectical development of the spirit or idea, the Marxists look at history more from materialist angle. To them, like all other forms of material existence, human history or human society is also material and it is guided by material laws. Hence, understanding of the particular laws guiding human history enables us to speed up the social contradictions and facilitate the progress of mankind. In order to understand this, I start with the very basics. What will be your answer if I ask you in what ways human beings differ from other animals? I am sure you will say human beings are rational, they have sense of morality, they have culture, language, religion, etc. etc. Marxism does not say that you are wrong, but what the Marxists emphasize is that the most important factor that distinguish human beings from animals is their ability to involve in production and reproduction of material requirements for their existence. Unlike animals who passively depend on nature for their existence, human beings actively interact with the nature and produce necessary things for survival and progress. 
according to Marxism, mode of production. That means how and what human beings produce at a given point of time. They actually determined the stage of a development of a human history. In Marxist theory of history, mode of production becomes very important. This mode of production has two elements, relations of production and forces of production. Relations of production talks about how human beings relate to one another while engaging in production. While forces of production talks about how human beings as a whole engage with nature in the production process. In a way, relations of production refers to relations among human beings. That means, in, while involving in any production, human beings come together in certain form to engage in production. And relations of production talks about uh, those uh, relations. In class divided societies, these relations take the form of class relations. Come to forces of production, this basically denotes, you know, science, technology, tools, implements, etc. that the human beings use while engaging in production. So it is not that the human beings uh, use only their hands and uh, legs. They also use uh, science, technology, tools. And that is what uh, the force by uh, forces of protection we mean. You know, both this forces of production and relations of production, they are not static, they are changing. But there is a difference in their dynamics. While relations of production is generally stagnant over a period of time, forces of production are always active and dynamic. As a result, we can see at certain points of points in history, the forces of production, which is always growing, come in conflict with the, the existing relations of production. And this conflict results in crisis. The relations of production abstract the further growth of uh, the forces of production. That results in deep crisis in the society. How is this crisis resolved? According to Marxism, this crisis can be resolved only by dissolving the existing relations of production and going in for higher relations of production which are compatible with the growing forces of production. That means you have to dissolve those lower forms of uh, relations of production and opt for higher forms of relations of production. In class societies, this change becomes possible 
only through revolution. Because certain classes consider or try to retain the existing relations of production which are beneficial for them though it is going against the general interests of other classes. So that results in the need for a revolution which eliminates the reactionary forms of uh, relations of protection and replace it with the more advanced relations of protection. There is a misconception now among many that Marxism only talks about economy and neglects other aspects of social life. That misconception comes also because we emphasize so much about mode of production in our debates. But that is not what uh, Marxism really means. Marxists do say that mode of production is the base over which develops the superstructure comprising of legal, political, cultural, ideological institutions and their corresponding ideas and consciousness. Every base has its own corresponding superstructure. True, the base influences the superstructure. And as the base changes, sooner or later, even the superstructure has to change. However, this does not mean that superstructure is passive and mechanical and that it just follows what the base says. Actually, Superstructure, it is true, it is the product of the given base. But once superstructure is formed, it attains an amount of autonomy, so much so that it can interact with the base actively and even change the base. It can strengthen the base or even change the base. As such, the relations between the base and superstructure becomes dialectical, one influencing the other. Some Marxist scholars explain this to mean that economic basis is economic base is important only in the last instance but any element of uh, the base and superstructure can become dominant and determinant at a particular point of time sometimes it may be economy sometimes it can be politics Sometimes it can be ideology or religion. Hmm? So what we call as social formation actually includes uh, both this base and superstructure which are related to each other in a dynamic and dialectical way. his work, German Ideology, Marx talks of uh, different modes of production, primitive, Asiatic, slave, slave, feudal and capitalist modes of production. Each mode of production has its own relations of production 
and its own forces of production. And each mode of production gives birth to its own superstructure. Social or class contradictions that takes place within the social formation, it leads to the birth of new modes of production with the new superstructures. Actually, based on European experience, some Marxist thinkers explained how human society passed through primitive, slave, feudal, and now or in capitalist stage of development. Some people used this theory or explanation to mean that all societies across the globe experience these four stages in the same way as the Europe experienced. But I consider that as a very mechanical interpretation of a Marxist idea of history. To be frank, in his own lifetime, Marx himself spoke about the possibilities of a different other modes of production. He, in fact, spoke about Slav mode of production existing in Russia. So just as there are different modes of production, there can also be different contradictions. Each mode of production has its own contradiction and that contradictions may give birth to, uh, to the, those determine what kind of, uh, uh, what will be the next stage of uh, uh, human development in that particular uh, form of society. Hence, instead of the mechanical application of a European model to the whole world, Marx is in non-European world should understand their own social formations and understand the nature of the base or superstructure and the contradictions uh, emanating in that given formation and then try to see what uh, understand what would be the possible stage the next stage of human development uh, possible in that given social formation this brings as to another issue. If history is determined by relations of production and forces of production, the base and the superstructure, then where do the people stand? Don't people have any role to play in the human society? And that all changes take place mechanically, as in the case of inanimate things, without the need for human intervention? No. This is not what Marxism means. To Marxists, history means essentially human history. Nothing in history takes place without human interest, human concerns and human participation. Change does not take place automatically. Independent of uh, human consciousness and conscious human action. Nothing in society changes without human praxis. It is through praxis 
that human beings change the material circumstances that influence them. While recognizing the human role, Marxism, of course, talks about uh, the limitations of uh, human praxis as well. It is true, Marx says, men make history, but they cannot make and unmake anything and everything and in, at any time or anywhere. What human beings can achieve always depend on what stage of development they are at that moment and what kind of circumstances they encounter and what kind of changes are possible in the given society at that given point of time in history. And that is very crucial. So there is, it is true that human beings make history provided they understand and follow the material laws that govern the human society. So these two things, both are important. Human praxis is important and at the same time we should understand that the material laws within which the human beings act and interact. So this is in a nutshell all that I have discussed so far. Marx's idea of uh, production, the importance of production, the contradictions in the mode of production, the relationship between base and superstructure, and the role of human beings. All this together constitute uh, what we call as Marxist conception of history or historical materialism. I hope you understand. I will try in my next lecture to discuss some of the important passages in Marxist theory and also give you some of the important uh, readings which are essential for understanding uh, Marxist idea of history. For now, this is enough. Thank you very much and let us meet in the next class.